Hello and welcome to In My Element. This chemistry lesson is on particle theory. So you've got three images here. What does each of these images show? Have a little think. Jot anything down that you can recognise or you might think that I'm aiming for you to get. You've got a hammer um, and hitting an object. You've got a glass of drink with some ice in and you've got three balloons. So, first picture, you've got two solids. One is being used to break the other. Both are a fixed volume and a shape, okay? You can see that on the hammer. You can also see that on the shape of being hit, it, hit with. Then you've got a solid glass and a liquid. And you've also got ice cubes within it. So you have got a solid in the liquid. You've got the glass, which is the solid, the liquid is within the glass, and there is another solid within that liquid. And then you've got balloons. These balloons are filled with gas. And the gas takes, look at the three different shaped balloons. It can all be of the same material. And the gas has taken, it's the same gas filling the balloons. It could be helium, for example. And that gas has taken the shape of each balloon. So, Moving on to particle theory, we've got a diagram here of particles. We're talking about a solid in this first one. And each of these circles represents a particle. These lines here are movement lines, okay? Now, particles in a solid have very little energy. I've got these movement lines here to represent that they are vibrating about the fixed, their fixed position. They're very close together. They are touching, okay? You can see that. And then they are so close together, they can't be compressed. They cannot be squished. They can't be squished together. So there's your solids. Now, look at your liquid. The arrangement's different, look. It's not in regular lines. If we just pop back one, look at the lines. They're a very regular arrangement in the solid. But if you move on to the liquid, we're not. We've got these curved lines here. These are representing a bit of movement, okay? So the particles in a liquid, they're close together, still got them touching. Really important when you're asked to draw these, you show the majority of them are touching. They can move around past one another. That will enable the flow of the liquid. There are some forces of attraction between these particles and they do not compress easily because the particles are close together. Okay, you think back to lesson one, we talked about whether they could be compressed or not. And we said, if you compressed the liquid, it would spill out of the container it was in. Okay, and then the particles in a gas. All spaced out, look, you can see these little lines showing movement lines and plenty of energy. So they have a lot of energy. They move freely. These particles also will collide with one another occasionally. Not only will they collide with one another, they might collide with the surface of the container. There are weak forces between them and they do not keep a definite shape. Remember what we said, we said about those balloons, that helium gas would take the shape of the balloon. Okay, there's a low density as there's only very few particles in a large space. Okay, this the particle theory is the basis for your key stage three and key stage four chemistry. Really, really important that you get this right now. So, you, I'm just going to pause that a second. Just run that back a moment. There we go. You need to be able to draw a particle diagram for each state of matter. I'm just going to show you that now. And it will be as I would expect you to do it. So it's not going to be perfect. But let me talk you through it. Here's a video. So you're going to show, you're going to draw the solid. Look, I'm drawing the regular arrangement. Vibration lines. Then we go on to the liquid. Again, they're touching. Irregular arrangement. Okay, couple of movement lines. Change colour again, the gas. Just going to press pause a second. Um, they're spaced out. Look, they're all spaced out. We've got a couple of movement lines. They're not perfectly drawn circles, okay? They don't have to be. But you can see, 
me just move that back. You can see, actually, if we go to there, you can see that they have got, you, you can clearly see one is a solid, one is a liquid, one is a gas. You need to be able to draw that and you will need to draw that on your worksheet as well. OK, very important. Like we said, regular arrangement, irregular arrangement in the liquid, but touching. And these are all spaced out. And notice the movement marks, the energy marks on these show that they've got plenty of energy. They will collide with one another and they will collide with the container they are placed in. Right, a couple of bits on gases. So um, we've got our gas particles here. You need to know what happens when you increase the temperature or pressure in a gas. So firstly, when we increase the temperature within a gas, the particles will gain more energy. So look, they'll, contain, um, they'll collide with the container sides. Not only will they collide with the container size, they'll collide with one another more often. This here, when we increase the pressure, look, if we started off here and then we push the pressure, so we move, we make the container that the gas is held in smaller. Look at what happens to those particles there. So as you reduce the volume, okay, so we've reduced the volume of the container, look, we've halved it. The pressure is increasing because the particles are squashed closer together. All right. And then think about diffusion. When we, and we talked about this, we've talked about this in the cells topic. Um, you've got a gas in the container, which we've got here. And I've used the same image. If you haven't already seen the cells topic, this is the same image that comes up when we're talking about movement um, within cells. What happens with a gas when it's released from its container? So when you press this button on this aerosol can and you release the gas, what is happening? That's what you need to be able to explain. This gas is spreading and diffusion is the spread of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. The pressure has been released and the gas has been allowed to diffuse out of the canister and is spreading into the area it's been released into.